You really have to hand it to Tata Motors for constantly updating the Harrier since its launch in 2019. But what I have with me today is the most comprehensive update yet. It's new on the outside, it gets a redone interior, it gets a whole lot more tech and there's some mechanical changes as well. So we really need to see it in a lot more detail. Let's talk styling first. Like a typical facelift, changes here are restricted to soft parts like the lights and bumpers, but the combined effect of all the new elements is an edgier and even more striking looking Harrier. Taking center stage up front is a larger grille that gets the requisite dose of flash with metal-like embellishments. The familiar slim DRLs on top have been pinched further and now come connected by a light bar. This new arrangement has allowed the inclusion of a cool welcome animation which is a big feel-good feature in its own right. Talking lights, the main headlights are now LED units and now come vertically oriented set amidst more prominent angular cutouts on the bumper. An aero-enhancing air passage from the bumper to the wheel wells has also been included. Lower down, there's a larger surround for the air dam and a wider, chunkier scuff plate as well. At the sides, changes are limited and it's the new design for the wheels that'll be your biggest giveaway of this being the updated Harrier. Notably, the wheels are now a size larger. 17 inches is the base size now, higher spec and top spec variants ride on 18 inches, while the dark edition versions get 19 inches. This aside, there's bold Harrier lettering on the doors and a badge on the C-pillar to commemorate Tata Motors' journey to 50 lakh sales. Styling at the back has been freshened up with reprofiled tail lamps and the incorporation of a full-width light bar. The bumper has also been given a makeover with new vertically-oriented elements. Worth bringing in is that the Harrier will be offered in four trims, personas as Tata Motors calls them, that are identifiable on the outside by their wheels, detailing and exterior colors. The version featured here is the Fearless and you know what? It's sunlit yellow paint shade works. What do you think of the updated Tata Harrier? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, please do give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to Autocar India. And if you like this video in Hindi, please check the Watcard India channel. Just as on the outside, the Harrier's interior also sees some big changes. The talking point is the redone dashboard. Now, uh, the version with us is the Harrier Fearless which is the range topping model and exclusive to this one is this body colored panel on the dashboard body colored stitching this little leatherette effect on the grab handles on the base of the center console as well as on the doors now it is quite loud but uh, you will get toned down colors if you go for a gray or silver each persona gets its own interior color theme as well but there's way more to talk about the Harrier has taken a huge leap up in terms of technology. You get a 10.25 inch digital display. Now we've seen this on the updated Nexon and it is quite a nice display though on the Harrier it's seeming a bit small perhaps because it's pushed so far into the instrument binnacle. I do like the graphics, they're very nice to use and I really like the fact that it syncs up with your phone's Google Maps and you can have a full screen map view as well. Perhaps the most significant tech update to me is the 12.3 inch touchscreen. Now this is a huge, huge departure from the old 8.8 .8 inch unit which was never great to start with. This one is slick, it's responsive, it feels good, it's vibrant, it's got all the colors. The size is really nice and it packs in a whole lot of features as well. There's wireless Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay. There's a very nice 360 degree camera which gives you a 3D image of the car. It's also your display for the onboard air purifier. It also is your display for the JBL sound modes. There are 13 sound modes and they are nicely tuned to get the most out of the audio system. The audio system gets an additional speaker on the dash taking the count of 5 speakers, 4 tweeters and a subwoofer that together deliver a rich and deep sound. Also new to the Harrier is a redone console for the climate control system that now sits amidst this gloss black panel. It's hidden from view when the car is switched off, switch it on and it all lights up. Things to like include physical toggles, 
for temperature settings. Mind you, the Harrier gets dual zone climate control now, so the front passenger also has a dedicated toggle. What does come across as a bit fiddly is this touch panel for the blower control. Uh, you will have to take your eye off the road when you're driving and that's not ideal. But I have found that voice controls actually do the job quite well. It's not the quickest responding system, but it works well enough. Let's try it. Hey Tata. Increase blower speed, please. Sure, increasing blower speed too. Two. So it takes its time, but it gets the job done. You can give voice commands in six languages to control other functions, including the panoramic sunroof. Sunroof, kholo. Zarur sunroof khol rahe hai. There are other changes as well. Also new to the Harrier is Tata's new look steering wheel that gets a gloss black panel at the center and an illuminated Tata logo. This one is a four spoke flat bottom wheel and it's really nice to hold. As before, the Harrier's front seats are nice and large and you get a really commanding driving position. You get the feel of being in a big SUV and many will like it for just that. The driver's seat gets six-way power adjust and memory. The front passenger seat gets power adjust too and both front seats are ventilated. The feature list is actually really long and in addition to what's been spoken of already, there's also eSIM based connected tech so you can remotely keep in touch with your car and also part of the package is ambient lighting at the dash and around the sunroof. Interestingly, while the colors can be changed, you don't get a full spectrum of colors and the palette depends on the persona you've opted for. Things could have been improved in other areas though. The Harrier also gets a new rotary selector for the terrain modes with an inbuilt screen. It looks really nice, but it also reveals an ergonomic uh, oversight that you can't really use it very comfortably with the gear position here. Uh, there are other things to bring up as well in terms of ergonomics. Again, the USB slots aren't the easiest to access. Putting your phone onto the wireless charger isn't the easiest. And uh, from the driver's seat, I've always found even in uh, the earlier Harriers that my knee is always touching the dashboard and that's not comfortable. And on manual versions, there's just no dead pedal, which is quite frustrating. Tata Motors has revised the pedal position to address the knee touching dash issue, but it didn't quite do it for me. Overall perceived quality and fit and finish have taken a jump up, but I do have some concerns. In terms of quality, all your typical contact points like the steering, the gear lever, the door handles, they all feel really nice to touch. But if you do poke around, you will find some scratchy plastics. The bigger concern for me is this extensive use of gloss black materials. Now, what we've seen in other cars at least is that this surface tends to get a bit scratchy and also attracts a lot of smudges. And this may take a bit of extra care to keep clean. As mentioned, a more convenient phone storage bay would be nice, but this aside, the Harrier does well on space for small items. There's bottle holders on the doors, a large glove box with useful compartments, cup holders at the center console, as well as a cooled box between the seats that also features USB-A and C ports. Moving over to the back seat. Not all that much has changed at the back of the updated Harrier, but it does get some new additions. For instance, there is the all-important sun blind, which is really handy on a hot day, and I really like the new headrest, which can be wrapped around your head and they offer great support. Otherwise, as before, the highlight here is the space on offer. I'm just under six feet tall. The front seat is set to my driving position. I have a lot of knee room and this is a seat that can comfortably accommodate three adults. But it's a bit of a shame that Tata hasn't given the center passenger a dedicated headrest, though they do get a three-point seat belt. A dedicated blower control for the rear section would have been a nice addition, though the rear vents mounted on the B pillars do a good job of directing cool air to your face. You'll be comfortable for long hours on the back seat of a Harrier, and there are enough provisions for your devices and odds and ends on a long journey. Storage spaces at the back include two cup holders on the center armrest. There's a bay for your phone. You also get a USB type A and type C charging ports. And what's also handy is this two level storage on the doors. When it's time to load luggage, you'll welcome the addition of a powered and gesture controlled tailgate. The earlier Harrier's tailgate was heavy. 
The boot can accommodate big suitcases with ease and a marginally lower flow has actually resulted in space increasing 20 litres to 445 litres. The rear seats can be folded down if you need more room too. As before, the spare is mounted under the body and is a 16-inch steel rim. That's that for what's changed outside and inside, but what's the updated Harrier like to drive? The switch from a hydraulic power steering to an electric power steering, larger wheels, suspension tweaks, inclusion of rear disc brakes and a BS6 Phase 2 ready engine promise much. Of these changes, it's the improved steering that makes the biggest difference to the Harrier experience. One of the big mechanical updates on the Harrier is the switch to an electric power steering and you feel the benefits of that when you're driving in town, particularly when you have to make a U-turn. Because the effort is literally half of what you needed on the older Harrier that had a notoriously heavy steering. The benefits of the new steering setup extend to high-speed environments as well. Harrier owners will be familiar with this feeling that there's a dead zone at the straight ahead position and then suddenly, with a few degrees of lock, the car darts quite sharply. That problem has been uh, done away with with this update and it just feels like a more connected driving experience. Handling on the whole feels more sorted. Sport driving mode adds a bit more weight to the steering which is nice when you're driving faster. I'm also happy to report that steering kickback in which the steering actually moves over a bump is no longer a problem on the Harrier. In terms of ride comfort, the Harrier feels familiar. Tata Motors has upgraded the Harrier's tyre size to 18 inches and with it also come a few suspension tweaks. Now from behind the wheel, low speed ride feels uh, similar which means that on smaller surface imperfections, the Harrier still feels a bit jittery, you can still feel it come through to your seat. But when the potholes and uh, bumps become larger, that's where the Harrier actually shines. It really takes bumps like a champ and the ride also gets better the faster you go. It feels show-footed at higher speeds, drives like the heavy car that it is and that all comes together to give you great confidence. Higher spec versions of the Harrier now make the move to rear disc brakes. Braking performance from the all-round disc brake setup is good, but the feel from the pedal is a bit mushy and under hard braking, you can tell that this is a very heavy vehicle. On to the matter of performance. First things first, the updated Harrier doesn't get a petrol engine option as was widely expected. Tata's upcoming 1.5-litre turbo petrol engine is a good year or so away from joining the Harrier lineup. The existing diesel engine that powers the front wheels has been carried forward with a few tweaks for latest emission norms. The 2 litre 170 horsepower 350 Nm engine is now running in BS6 phase 2 spec, but from behind the wheel, you actually can't really tell a difference from the earlier versions of the Harrier, and that's because in its characteristics, it remains the same. It's got a strong mid range, it's got a wide power band, and generally feels like a powerful engine. On the flip side, refinement levels are still not the best and that's something I wish Tata would have worked on because this engine groans and moans and when you extend it, it sounds quite boomy as well. The MG Hector that uses the same Fiat sourced engine for instance runs much quieter. Drive modes namely Eco, City and Sport are part of the package. Each mode has its own throttle sensitivity profile, being most responsive in sport and most relaxed in eco. There are normal wet and rough terrain modes too that tweak ESC characteristics for different conditions. But the front wheel drive Harrier is no off-roader. It'll do light trails with ease and has all the ground clearance you'd need. As before, gearbox options include a 6-speed manual and a 6-speed torque converter automatic. The Harrier I'm driving is the 6-speed manual and uh, I find the shift action slightly better than uh, the older Harrier. You still have to use a bit of effort so it's not the slickest shifting manual gearboxes. The bigger problem for me is the clutch. Uh, it's a long travel clutch and isn't the easiest to modulate. Frankly, it's not the gearbox of choice and if you're interested in a Harrier, it's the automatic you should be considering. Irrespective of which gearbox or even which persona you choose, all Harriers get six airbags, ESC, traction control, three-point seat belts for all seats, Isofix child seat mounts, a tire pressure monitoring system and more as standard. 
higher spec versions add in hill descent control, a driver knee airbag, and also get camera and radar based advanced driver assistance systems or ADAS. Part of the Harrier's safety suite are ADAS functions and a lot of them are very handy in day-to-day -day driving such as auto high beam adjust that automatically switches to dipper so as to not blind oncoming traffic. I also find the blind spot detection that has a warning light flash on your mirrors a very useful feature and what is particularly useful is the blind view monitor which shows a feed from your wing mirrors on the center screen. Also included is lane departure warning that will alert you when the car is veering off the lane. But there are no steering interventions which means the car won't automatically keep you centered in your lane. Interestingly, Tata says steering intervention will be rolled out soon and can be added onto the initial lot of cars via a software update. A feature that I haven't tried today and thankfully so is automatic emergency braking. I hope uh, it does its job when the need arises. Still, I'd have liked some control over the forward collision warning system sensitivity. Tailing a car close didn't give a warning prompt when I expected. A feature that I'd have liked to try out today is adaptive cruise control, but sadly that's exclusive to the automatics, which is perhaps another reason to consider the automatic over the manual. The 2024 Harrier goes on sale on October 17 and it's safe to assume a bump up in prices. We expect the range to start at 16 lakh rupees for the base smart persona and top off at 25 lakh rupees for the fully loaded Fearless Plus Dark Edition. With the updates, Tata has addressed many of the Harrier's weaknesses. The new steering makes the SUV far easier to live with, it's taken a huge leap forwards in tech and there's a newfound wow factor to the interior as well. At the same time, the new styling builds on the original's design to fantastic effect. However, a petrol engine is missed and punchy as the diesel is, it's not as refined as it ought to be. In the big picture though, the Harrier is now a far more complete package and a Tata you'd be happy to spend big money on. Expect to see a lot of them on our roads. If it's three-row flexibility that you're looking for in your next SUV, the updated Tata Safari will be of interest. Stay tuned for our review. MS Dhoni, 40 needed in 6 hours, easy, hai. achievable, 6 down. You get this feel of being in a big SUV and many will like it for that. <laughs> come on, yaar. come on, facelift, come on.